Alrighty, what's up? Um, Saturday morning. Finally have some time to film some videos. Um, this is what I call the drinking purgatory, and I'm sure a lot of you battle with it. I know I did, and it's like, it's a tough one, right? Like, you're not only battling boredom, you want to drink. Um, you're also going to battle, like, the weekends, because Friday's going to trigger you if you're a weekend binge drinker. The whole weekend you're used to drinking, so your neurotransmitters, you're just used to doing that. It's like a habitual habit. It takes a human, what, 14 to 21 days to break a habit? But, yeah, we're creatures of habit, and drinking every weekend, you will be wired to want to drink during the weekend. That's a hard part about quitting drinking. If you're an everyday drinker, it's going to be substantially even harder than that. But the drinking purgatory, you're fighting the weekends. The holidays, the big thing for me was like any victory or defeat, any like happiness or sadness, okay? Like if it was Thursday, Friday, and I was super stressed out and mad, I would want to drink to get that shut off, right? To, uh, to not think, to like get that release. But in turn, it made things worse. It was a relief for a few hours. And yeah, thinking about it right now, I, I, I adored and loved that release, that that shut off right but the next day it always made things substantially worse so like you're fighting your victories and defeats man so you're stressed you're mad you want to drink right and when you drink in that mindset it can make things even worse especially when you're drunk you can act out more that's another topic and then victory say you had a good week say you had a win you want to celebrate that win and drink that's how a lot of people are wired with drinking so like you're constantly battling it Good, bad, drink, weekends, drink, holidays, drink, any type of event, drink. That's why people are always like, oh, yeah, I don't care. Um, It's National Drinking Weekend. I'm drinking. Or it's, uh, you know, any type of awareness month. I'm drinking for that. You know, people find an excuse for everything to drink. I've heard some ridiculous excuses to drink, and I've even had some myself. But, yeah, you have to break that perpetual cycle. And you have to rewire your brain. The gym. Do the gym on the weekends for several weekends, and you'll rewire to want to do that. Like, I have leg day today. I'm committed to leg days on Saturdays. I'm working 50-plus hours a week. Um, you know, on the weekends, I got to clean a bit. I got to take care of the place, all that. I have animals, all that stuff. <clears throat> um, I want a game. You know, I'm a nerd. I like to collect things. I like to browse ebay and stuff i like to make content that's what my brain's focused on now like alcohol doesn't even phase me there's times it creeps up on me and i think about it and i get a little scared like oh my god like you know my it's coming into my mental space again then it will go away it always passes like weekends are not nearly as hard being past six months my girlfriend she's a full-time job in itself don't let her fool you I take up a lot of time with my girlfriend doing family things, which was one thing I would avoid while drinking. You know, I would not go to family events or really go around even friends to hang out when I was hungover, you know, or if I was actively drinking. But yeah, girlfriend, you'll spend more valuable time with them. You'll be, you'll be there in the present moment more. But you have to rewire your brain, right? Because you're... Your enjoyment mechanism is drink, drink, drink. When you, you need to change that into like your physical fitness, your financial stability, that should be your priorities. Like first and foremost, you have to really rewire your brain and, and make it concrete. Okay. It takes time. It takes months and, you know, weeks and months of development and years. Um, it's not easy to do. I remember being stuck in that. Like, oh my God, I'm mad. I'm drinking. Oh my God. What a great week. I'm drinking. Oh, I made this much money. I, you know, had a good investment. I lost on an investment. Drink, drink, drink. It all correlated to drinking. And then on top of it, boredom. I wasn't fulfilling my time with anything substantial on the weekends. I've always usually went to the gym or worked out during the week while, you know, my work week was going on. But the weekends, it was like boredom. Okay, my workout's done. Boredom. Now I substantiate with more working out. And more productive things right on the weekend and by sunday you will it's like i've said before i never wake up without a hangover and regret not drinking i'm always happy i did not drink the night 
That used to really bother me with FOMO, which I've talked about before. You know, FOMO and obsessing on it, and you got to get past that. That gets so much easier in time. I'm not saying it's ever going to fully go away. That's going to be a battle within itself for ever, possibly. I feel like when I get a few years under my belt, God willing, it'll be such a minute thing. I won't, it won't even phase me. So, yeah, this coffee, this black coffee is still, still my kryptonite right now. Um, I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. I'd like to detox from it. I've done it twice before. That's a whole other topic. I've won a year, and then I went three months. So I know I can do it, but it's a week of irritability. Not as bad as quitting nicotine, though. So, like, <clears throat> once you have all this stuff under your belt, it makes things easier to be disciplined. But, uh, yeah, I want you to realize how often your brain's going to shift to wanting to drink. Like, it's everything, man, which I've said Numerous times already. Boredom, wins, losses, happy, sad. It's all going to compound. And that's what's so hard about, you know, addiction and drug addiction in general. Your emotions are directly tied. Even with food, people will eat food every time. Happy, sad, bored, right? It's the same thing. Food's a drug too. Some people, it doesn't affect like that, but some people eat their emotions away. They forget about their problems and they forget about things while they're eating and it becomes a compound issue and they gain a lot of weight. And you got to really rewire your brain there too and look at food as like fuel. Don't look at it as like a treat. You can have a cheat day. You can enjoy food. You can moderate how much you eat. Um, but you have to look, I look at food, food as a fuel, right? I don't look at it as pleasure because I like being fit to me is better than anything tastes. Now, do I get cravings for food? Sure, man. I love Chinese pizza. You name it, on and on. I can eat with the best of them, but I know where that leads me. I know where that takes my body. I know how it makes me feel. So, I, I, as Wes Watson says, it's non-negotiable. I just don't do it. I still have a cheat day, and I over-carb load on that day, but then I make sure I utilize those carbs during a workout, right? That's, that is what it is. But I just wanted to discuss this because I just call it the drinking purgatory. And I, I knew what it was when I was in it because I, I was aware of it, you know. And I, I always hated that, how, like, no matter what, the drink was the go-to. No matter what the situation was. I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, I don't have much more to say about it. I just wanted to touch on the topic because it, it's like you're in a box you can't get out of because... You're just, that's the way you're wired, honestly. You become a creature of habit to it, and you have to break that cycle. And it's not easy. It is, it is very tough the first few weeks and the first three months, in my opinion. After four, six months, it gets drastically easier. Like I said, if it's that much easier at six months, imagine a year and two years, five, ten years, right? Like, you can beat alcohol. It's, it gets weaker over time. It really does, coming from experience. I knew when I got past my all-time best sober spree of four months, I knew it would get easier because it was easier then. But I, I can't remember how I slipped up. It was just sort of like, oh, I'll moderate again. And that does not work for me. If, and if it doesn't work for you, I do not suggest falling into that trap. Oh, I'll moderate again. And that's a whole other topic I got to bring up. That down. Moderation is, it'll lead you right back to heavy drinking, honestly. If you're someone who can moderate, then it's not really a problem for you, right? But people that can't moderate, the person who has to have 20 drinks after they've had two or three, that's not the answer. Because I can go out and shoot pool and have two beers for weeks on end, you know, once a week, but it always leads me into heavier drinking again. Especially, you know, it. I don't need to really go on about that, but moderation is not my answer. You can moderate best of power, best of luck to you. But if you're watching these videos, I'm sure you're not a moderate drink, you know, because people that are don't seek out these kind of videos because it's not a problem or a hindrance to their life. So, yeah, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.